I can't hear you, but we're going to go ahead and get started since it's 7.32. So surprise, surprise, Kyle has actually taken the evening to go down to um, Keith Morris Church in Sarasota for the increase uh, conference going on and he took the girls so he has put me in charge of the lesson tonight so um, what I want to what I felt led to um, share about this evening is I've been reading I just finished reading um, Annette Capps quantum faith book which is amazing by the way and um you know i think actually i'll um start the just start off with some prayer <laughs> so uh, father i just thank you for this evening i thank you um lord that you have just put everything in order as it should be. And I thank you. It's going to be an awesome evening. Lord, I pray ears to be open. Um, just speak through me. Open my ears to hear you, Lord. Open my heart to receive and flow through what you have. Open the hearts um, of everybody hearing this, Lord. Let it be received and lives be changed in Jesus' name. So. Um, yeah, so we're going to start off. We are, um, on the faith series. And so I'm going to start off with our text of Mark 11, 22 through 25. And I'm actually going to start off reading the amplified version of this. It says, and Jesus replying said to them, have faith in God constantly. Truly, I tell you, whosoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and be thrown into the sea and does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that what he says will take place, it will be done for him. For this reason, I am telling you, whatsoever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you and you will get it. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him and let it drop. Leave it, let it go. In order that your father who is in heaven may also forgive you your own failings and shortcomings and let them drop so um, looking at this verse from the surface it kind of seems like <laughs> to somebody who's not familiar with faith seems like kind of a ridiculous statement from Jesus like okay how can words be so powerful to move a mountain and I just wanted to share tonight that quantum physics has actually proven what Jesus said to be scientific fact so we are yeah. this isn't just faith this is now science crazy and I um, Annette said in her book that, so if anybody doesn't know who Annette Capps is, she is the daughter of Charles Capps. And he's the author of The Power of Your Tongue, a lot of other books um, about speaking the word, how our words have power, a lot of it based on Mark eleven twenty three, And she mentioned he actually had a prophecy spoken over him that said some things which have required faith to believe will no longer require faith for it will be proven scientific fact. Okay, so what is uh, quantum physics? 
I did not know about quantum physics before I read this book, and I'm sure there are a lot of other people who don't know about it as well. And if you're watching or hearing, I have Noah, and I was not able to get him to sleep before this, so I'm just, I'm believing that it will go well with him and he will be just fine. Um, okay, so quantum physics is the study of things so small that we cannot see them. Yet everything we see is made up of these subatomic particles. For instance, um, the chair that you're sitting in is a solid piece of furniture. However, it is made up of smaller things that we can't see. Everything is made up of atoms, and those atoms even break down even further to more subatomic particles. <clears throat> so I'm going to go on to Luke 17.6. And the Lord answered, if you had faith, this is also amplified, trust and confidence in God, even so small, like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea and it would obey you. Come here, Noah. No, no. No, no, buddy. Hold on, I gotta go get him. He's about to climb up the stairs there. Okay, just block the stairs so he can't go back up there. Okay, so in here, Jesus is talking about um, the grain of mustard seed, and which he's talking about the small things that cannot be easily seen manifest themselves and affect in this larger world where we live. So basically he's saying, okay, Mary, can you give her the um, code to get in? Is that possible? Okay, so... Okay. Okay, and for those of you just joining in, Kyle has taken the girls down to the um, conference at Keith Morse Church. Um, he has an uh, increased conference going on this week, so he took the night off. Um, okay, so... In here, Jesus is talking about the mustard seed, and he's basically saying at that point in time, he brings up the smallest particle that they knew about. They didn't know about atoms and the subatomic quarks and all that stuff. And so he's basically saying, he's bringing into saying, if you had the smallest amount of faith, and we've heard um, you know, before talking about planting that faith. Well, even if you have the smallest amount of faith that you can't even see it, but you're planting it, that faith, even though it cannot be seen, 
affects the seen world. So we're talking about what cannot be seen affects what is seen world. Today, he may have said, you know, if you have faith as small as an atom or as small as a quark, you can say to this tree that is ginormous and it can be seen to obey you, to obey your words. Just like in Hebrews 11.3, he says, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So in this, you know, he's talking about God framed the world by his words. The word of God, which is invisible, created what you see, which is visible. So, in a way, think about it like this. Oxygen atoms, can you see them or can you not? Visible or invisible? You cannot see oxygen. You can't see the oxygen that you're breathing in the air. You can't see what you're breathing out. Can you see the hydrogen in the air? I don't, you cannot see it. It is invisible. However, these two invisible things, when brought together, create water. Water, you guys. Ah, this is so exciting. I just love this. I love this. Things that are invisible create visible. Oxygen, hydrogen are invisible, yet they create water, which we can feel and drink and be hydrated with and affects so much of our lives, yet created by invisible. I just, I love it. And it excites me so much. So in the same way, our words our energy and we create with our words even though they are not seen they create an image in your mind and they are energy they are energy our words are energy to create just like god created us in genesis 1 26 he said let us Make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So you might say okay well yeah god created with his words but we're just man well here it says we were created in the image and likeness of him he created us in the exact same way so our words also create our world we he created the world and we create our own world with our words and if we go back to Mark 11, 22 and 23, we remember it says, Jesus said, have faith in God, which can also be translated, have, have the faith of God or have God's faith. Have God's faith. Have the same kind of faith that God had. He saw what he wanted to create in his mind. He had it inside of him. And he spoke it with his words. And it came into existence. He created with his words. So words are energy. Words are energy. We're talking about quantum physics. Proving the word of God. Proving faith proving that the word is true and it is now scientific fact that the word is true what jesus said in mark 11 
is true. So if words are energy, just like the energy flowing into your house, flowing to your microwave, your washing machine, you can't see it, but it affects the things in the natural realm. The energy coming into your house works your washing machine to wash your clothes. The unseen affecting the seen. Words are energy. If you yell at your car long enough, you know, as you're, uh, have you ever had a car that just frustrates you and you sit there and, you know, it might conk out on you or something. You get so frustrated and you're just, ah, oh, you're the worst car in the whole wide world. I can't stand you. Well, you might want to rethink those thoughts, those words, because that's putting energy into those molecules. Remember, everything is made up of smaller subatomic particles. And when we speak those words, we are affecting that and it will in turn obey what we have to say. So if you're telling your car it's a worthless piece of junk, it's gonna eventually do what you're telling it to do. Um, if you're yelling at your kids, oh, you never listen, you never listen, you never listen. Guess what? What you're saying affects even them. They are made up of little subatomic particles too. And so those subatomic particles hear what you say and they say, oh, don't listen. And so they don't listen. Um, or if you're yelling at your spouse or let me tell you this, you guys. So. Kyle and I have been married for nine and a half years. He has sweatshirts that look brand new that he's had even before we got married. Why? He sees his things. He sees it as brand new. He sees it as staying in good condition. You know, you buy, if you go buy a pair of jeans, oh, these worthless jeans are already falling apart on me. Well, they're falling apart because you put that energy out there and told them to fall apart. Kyle puts out the energy for his clothes to stay like brand new. And guess what? They stay like brand new. It's crazy. Our words affect what we get. Our words affect what we get. So if you were in high school, you would remember, or you may not remember, but you may remember the little diagram of, um, of an atom. And in the middle of the atom is the nucleus. And the electrons, it was almost like they orbit the nucleus like, you know, the planets orbit the sun. Well, scientists have discovered that the electron that is shown orbiting the nucleus is not actually there in particle form. It exists in a wave state, almost like a cloud. But then when a person looks at it, is when it takes that particle form. And so the particle is responding to the observer's interaction with it. You guys, the particle responds to the observer. The particle responds to the observer. It's not in that state until they looked at it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This just excites me so much. I just can't. I just love this. I just love science. So, uh, let's see. Okay. And so they also notice that these subatomic particles with different observers, they actually responded in different ways. And so, and I can, I can blatantly see this, you guys. I, I obviously have 
um, a belief that my kids don't listen to me as well as they do as with Kyle because they act so different with me as they do with Kyle. They are just quiet. They don't fight. They, they are so, they're so good with him. And then when they get with me, I'm like pulling my hair out. I'm like, why do they act like this with me? And he's looking at me like, Stace, you uh, obviously are, are, are seeing them in a different way than I see them. So I'm working on it. I'm working on seeing them as well behaved and listening to me. And uh, what's up, buddy? So, um, come here, bud. Hey, buddy. Come here. You want to come up here? Okay. And just like in Mark 11, the things that you desire are made up of atoms. And so they know what you believe and act accordingly. The things you desire act according to what you believe. And it's not, remember it says, what you believe in your heart. Not a mind, I believe this. It's a heart what we believe and sometimes those things in our hearts can be hidden away um you know from what we believed when we were younger and just not we just not realize it and so if we look at things how things are behaving in our life it means there must be a belief there about why it is behaving that way if something's not going the way that you want it to say okay there must be a belief in my heart that is causing this reaction there must be a belief that is causing this just like proverbs 4 23 it says keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life out of your heart flow the issues of life if you're always arguing with people that's an issue of life that's coming out of your heart if you always get along with people that's another issue of life that's coming out of your heart that just says hey i get along with everybody i just somehow get along with everyone or maybe you say i just i don't know what's wrong with me i fight with everybody i come out around <laughs> That's, that's a, a belief in your heart that is coming out and causing that to happen. Proverbs 23, 7, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You are going to be what you believe in your heart. The thoughts and beliefs that we carry also produce an energy. So we know that words produce energy, but our thoughts also produce an energy around us. Have you guys ever noticed, like, if you're angry about something, everything else kind of, like, goes on after that, and it just continues to get worse and worse and worse, and you're like... Why am I having such a terrible day? Well, you're producing an energy, something, whatever, you woke up on the wrong side of the bed, you had a bad dream or something, and just uh, things continue to go wrong. Or like um, if you have a couple, a married couple or somebody who's dating, they come over to your house and they walk in, you're like, whoa what were they just arguing about? You can feel the energy that they put off because even our, our thoughts have energy. And just like I said, with Kyle's sweatshirts, his, his clothes, like they stay looking brand new forever, forever. Why? Because he believes and he thinks he puts that out there and they respond. They, everything has a subatomic living energy particle your thoughts and beliefs produce an energy that people can perceive and react to okay if you believe that nobody likes you now again we're talking about issues of the heart 
issues of the heart. If you believe nobody likes you, you're going to emit a rejection energy and therefore people respond to that and just scatter away from you. If you go to a party, you know, and you're like, why doesn't anybody ever talk to me? Well, maybe we need to look at a heart issue and say, okay, yes, I believe that people don't like me. And so they always reject me or, you know, people love me so much and they just, I make people laugh. I make people laugh all the time. Then guess what? People are going to be laughing all the time around you. Okay. So our words have energy. Thoughts have energy and our, and everything has a frequency. Okay. Everything has a frequency. Have you ever been around somebody that they're just are, oh my goodness, you can just be with them and then leave their company and, and just feel so, so good inside. And you may not have even said a word. They may not have even said a word, but you're just being so encouraged and feel so good because they were emitting a good frequency. What was in their heart was coming out of them and creating an issue of life, another issue of life. So frequencies. Take, for example, if you boil your water in the microwave, so the heat emits, the heat emitted from your microwave is at a higher frequency than the water. So the water comes up to that higher frequency, okay? And it, it boils at the higher frequency. Your angry thoughts, your fearful thoughts are those lower frequencies. If you were to think of something sad, you know, oh, this guy really broke my heart or my friend really said this, what happens? You start feeling down. You start feeling yucky and you're like, oh, I just feel terrible. Well, why? You're, you're bringing in those lower frequencies. You're, as a man, thinketh in his heart, so is he. You're thinking these now, and you're bringing yourself down and down into the dumps. But if you start turning around and be like, oh, my gosh, you know what? I am so thankful. I, I'm so thankful for who I am, and I am so thankful that I just radiate good things around me. And I love my friends. I love the people that are around me. All of a sudden, you start feeling so much better. You're like, oh, I feel great. I am wonderful. I am happy. I love to make people laugh. I love to make people laugh. Even if you don't, I make people laugh. You start feeling better. You're radiating that higher frequency. It brings you up. It brings you up to good places. And um, in the subatomic, in the quantum, the, it's, the possibilities are endless. Um, you know, take for instance, gravity is always the same. You drop something, what happens? It falls, okay? But subatomic, quantum, nothing. Okay, you guys, listen to this. Oh my gosh. In the quantum subatomic arena, there are only possibilities and probabilities. Things don't work like you think they should. Okay? Nothing is there until you look. Remember I said the atoms are there in the cloud state and then all of a sudden you look at it, here, there it is. That's what you get. Because that's what you believe. You get what you believe. What you believe in your heart is what you get. Nothing is there until you look. What? All things are made of atoms, which are made of subatomic particles. These particles are not really particles because they only exist in a state of possibilities. Okay, um, Colossians 1.28, remember, it says that God calls things which are not to, oh, wait. Things that are not to bring to nothing the things that are. Okay? And also he says, 
God calls those things that be not as though they were. So we look at things and they become what we believe. It's only in your heart and your mind that things are going to become what you believe. It comes out of what you believe. So what am I trying to say here? I know this isn't, I'm not going to go as long as Kyle does because I just don't have that much in me, but so quantum faith, you guys, everything has energy. The things that you say have energy. You're affecting the world around you by what you believe, what you think, what you say. So we need to always be aware of what we're thinking. Always be aware of what we are saying. Thinking good things. Think those things that are pure and lovely. And we will get those things that are pure and lovely. And if, yeah. So here's one more thing I'm going to say. Um, just like what's in our heart comes out, our words must agree with in our heart. If our words are saying something different that's in our heart, we're not going to get the right response that we're looking for they need to line up they need to match they need to match your heart and your words must agree to produce the kind of mountain moving words jesus said we could have he said if you believe in your heart you will have what you say if you believe in your heart if you believe in your heart not your mind I was, um, you guys, I'm seeing, this is just, I love this. I'm seeing this so much too. So I was, I'll be honest. I was kind of like freaking out about tonight and I was trying, I was going to get Noah to sleep before, but I could tell that it wasn't going to happen because I, I was too, I was too wound up. And because I was putting that out, he was totally responding to it. And I've seen this over and over and over where if I'm stressed out about something, he doesn't act right. But once I can get myself to calm down, I start, you know, thinking good thoughts, believe in the word. It's like things turn around and he falls asleep so quickly. So Praise the Lord. I just, I hope you guys were blessed by this and just awesome. I love the fact that we create our world and, and we've been so programmed to think negative things. You know, like you talk negative to your car. Okay, well, let's think about this for a second. What if you start talking good things to your car? You know, just blessing it. Car, you know what? I love you. And I'm so thankful that you bring me to my job every day. And you are so reliable to me. And I'm just so thankful. I'm thankful for you, car. You run so well. And you heat up so quickly in the winter. And you cool down so quickly in the summer. If we just keep in mind, things react to what we say. And it's like people think it's so, it's hard. It's hard for me to say positive things because it's like I'm so trained in the negative. Ah, oh, this stupid shirt. Why are, why are you fitting right? Okay. I like this shirt. It fits me so well. It's, it's weird. It feels weird to say positive things to me. And, and once we get over that and renewing our mind, remember the word says that we renew our mind. We have to renew our mind because we've been so programmed to the ways of the world, which is Satan is the God of this world. And so he's programmed us to think all these negative gross things and, and God says to think positive. And so we do that and we will change our world. You guys, once we start thinking positive, the things around us 
will, it will respond to what we say. It will respond to us. It will, it will, it will, it will. Jesus said it will. Science says it will. It will. You just do not give up. It will respond to what you are putting out over it. It might take some time. Look, it took me, you know, so many years to be programmed negative from the world. It's not just going to turn around in a week. So, praise the Lord. I'm just going to end it. Father, I thank you that... Um, I just thank you that your word is the truth, Lord, and I thank you that our words have power. Lord, I thank you that you did create us in your image and your likeness. And Father, I ask that every word that is spoken go into the hearts of the hearers, that our lives be changed, Lord, that we start thinking about what we're thinking about and seeing what we're saying and start paying attention to the things <laughs> around us and, and, and why things are the way we, they are so we can change them, that we can create our world to be better in Jesus' name.